Now in lab, we have already experienced resistor capacitor circuits, and we are going to review resistor capacitor circuits here and learn a little bit more about them. So a resistor capacitor circuit or an RC circuit is one that contains both resistors and capacitors. In these types of circuits, which um, sometimes I'll call them DC, RC circuits, DC means direct current. We've got direct current coming from a battery, for example. In RC circuits, the current and the potential difference on the capacitor varies in time. And we saw that in lab. The values of the resistance and capacitance in an RC circuit determine the time it takes your capacitor to charge or discharge. And there's a characteristic time scale of the circuit um, that we define as the Greek letter tau, and that equals the res total resistance of the circuit times the total capacitance of the circuit. So you could have a bunch of capacitors in series or parallel. You could have a bunch of resistors in series or parallel in the circuit. This characteristic time, it will be the total resistance in the circuit times the total capacitance in our circuit. So here is um, an example of how we would charge our capacitor. Actually, for a true RC circuit, you need to have a resistor over here too um, on this side. So we have a battery that's supplying current to the capacitor. And the, let's imagine there's a resistor here, okay? And then the time it takes this capacitor to charge is um, defined by our characteristic time scale here. And then once we get the full amount of charge that we can pack on those plates of our capacitor, then we can disconnect the capacitor from the battery and then we can connect it across a resistor to discharge all of that charge that was stored on the capacitor to discharge it by creating a current that dissipates within the resistor. Now we also saw a graph. We saw this graph in lab. When you took the probes from the oscilloscope and put them on either side of the capacitor, we saw the potential on our capacitor as it was charging and as it was discharging. So whenever we charge our capacitor, so here's our power source, we've got a resistor, here's the capacitor, we're gonna close the switch to charge the capacitor. If we place a voltmeter with probes on either side of the capacitor, this is the graph we will see for the potential across those capacitor plates. And the equation that defines how this potential changes is this equation right here. The potential is equal to the maximum potential that you can get on your capacitor, which is the potential coming from your power source, times one minus e to the minus t over tau. This tau was our characteristic time scale. t is some time. At some time t, you'll have a potential across the plates of your capacitor determined by this equation here. So once we flip the switch, and once the capacitor is fully charged, once we get the full amount of potential that we can have across those plates, which will match the potential of our power source, then the current in the circuit becomes zero. We've placed all of the charge onto that capacitor and there's no longer any current that's gonna flow within that circuit, okay? Whenever our capacitor is fully charged. Then once our capacitor is fully charged, we can disconnect it from the battery and we can discharge it through the resistor. So here we've got our capacitor, here's the switch. We're gonna discharge that capacitor through our resistor here. And if we place probes on either side of the capacitor, this is the um, plot that we will see for how the potential decreases across the plates of our, of our um, capacitor. Um, so we had that charge stored and now we're taking that charge it's running a current and it's discharging through this resistor. You're dissipating power through the resistor. And the um, equation that describes how this potential changes in time as we're discharging is given by this equation right here. Um, v naught, uh, V is equal to the maximum potential that was already on your plates 
times e to the minus t over tau. And once our capacitor is fully discharged, then the current in the circuit also becomes zero. We've removed all the current off of that, all the charge off of that plate. And we've taken that current and we've dissipated power through the resistor here. I want to take a look at what happens to our equations when we're charging or discharging our capacitor through a resistor. What happens at the time when t is equal to tau, when t is equal to our characteristic time constant for our resistor capacitor circuit? And remember that characteristic time constant is the resistance of our resistor times the capacitance. What happens when t, the timestamp of our problem, after we close the switch to either charge or discharge our circuit? What happens when t is equal to tau? So here's our equation for uh, the potential across our capacitor when we are charging it. So when t is equal to tau, we have, um, this is, will be equal to v naught times 1 minus e to the minus tau over tau. And when we have tau over tau, that will give us 1. So this is the same thing as v naught times 1 minus e to the minus 1. Now, okay, remember, v naught, that's our maximum potential that we can get across our capacitor, which is going to match the potential supplied by our battery source or our power source. So this is the maximum potential we can get across those plates. So v naught times 1 minus e raised to the power of minus 1 is 0 0.3. Six, eight. So on your calculator, this E, this little E here, that's the E that has the value of 2.718. Then 1 minus 0 0.368, and that is equal to point, 0 0.632. So at the time, after we close the switch, when we reach the characteristic time constant while we're charging, the potential across the plates is point, 0 0.632 times its maximum potential, or 63.2% of its maximum potential. So that's what we were trying to do um, in one of our lab experiments where we were charging the capacitor, and you were trying to find the time after you closed the switch whenever you were charging your capacitor when the potential across the plates reached 63.2% of your maximum value. That is a way that we could find the characteristic time constant of that resistor capacitor circuit by looking for the time when the potential across the plates reached 63.2%. Now, when we reach t is equal to tau, let's see what happens um, for the potential across our capacitor when we're discharging that capacitor. So when we're discharging, this is e to the minus, with t is equal to tau, e to the minus tau over tau. So this will be v naught e to the minus 1. So e raised to the power of minus 1 is 0 0.368. Or we could write that as point three, six, eight, V naught. This V naught was the initial potential that was uh, across the capacitor plates before we begin to discharge. And um, this is the same thing as 36.8% of the original potential that was across our capacitor plates. So whenever we've charged up the capacitor, we've got the full amount of potential across the plates we disconnect that capacitor from the power source, and then we're going to flip the switch in order to discharge that capacitor across some device or across some resistor. When we reach a potential across the capacitor of 36.8% of the original potential, the time that it takes for that potential to drop to 36.8% of its original potential is our characteristic time constant tau of our circuit. So that characteristic time constant is a way that we can describe how our capacitor resistor circuit behaves whenever we're charging 
or discharging that capacitor. We're going to solve a problem where we have two capacitors in parallel and um, we're going to charge them within a resistor capacitor circuit. All right, so here is our circuit. We have two identical 20 millifarad capacitors and they are connected in parallel to each other to produce a smaller capacitance. These are in series with a 100 ohm resistor and a 10 volt power source. So these are my knowns. What is the potential across the capacitors at two seconds after the switch is closed? So in order to find this, we also have to find the total capacitance of the circuit and the characteristic time constant for our resistor capacitor circuit. All right, so this is our equation for the potential across a capacitor whenever we're charging it in an RC circuit. We're gonna use this. But what are we gonna use for this maximum potential that we could get across these plates? Well, these capacitors are in parallel. When capacitors are in parallel, they both have the same potential across the plates. Since they're in parallel, the maximum potential that either of these could get across their plates is also the potential that's supplied by our battery. So this V0 here, V0, that maximum potential that we could get across those plates, that number is going to be 10 volts. All right, so this is going to equal 10 volts times one minus E to the minus two seconds is T over, what's tau? Well, in order to find tau, remember tau is our characteristic time constant, tau is equal to the resistance of the resistors in our circuit times the capacitance of the capacitors in our circuit. Now, we know the resistance of the resistor, that's our 100 ohms here, 100 ohms. Now, this total capacitance in our circuit We've got two capacitors in parallel, so we have to figure out what is this total capacitance for those two capacitors in parallel. Now, whenever our capacitors are in parallel, the capacitance adds. So the equivalent capacitance or the total capacitance of these two in parallel would be 20 millifarads plus 20 millifarad, and that would give us 40 millifarad. Right. So our total capacitance of the circuit or the equivalent capacitance would be 40 millifarads. Milla is times 10 to the minus three, so that's 40 times 10 to the minus three farads. So our characteristic time constant is gonna be our 100 ohms times 40 times 10 to the minus three farads. So the characteristic time constant here is four seconds, all right. Now we can take our four seconds and we can put it in here for tau, four seconds. So this is going to be 10 volts times one minus e to the minus, we've got two over four, so that's e to the minus one half, okay? And the units of seconds over seconds cancel, so you don't wanna have any units in that exponent on our, our um, e here. This is then 10 volts times one minus e to the minus one half is 0 0.607, all right? So that is equal to 10 times one minus 0 0.607. This gives us 3.93 volts. So at a time of t is equal to two seconds, or that's half of our characteristic time constant, the potential across both of my capacitors is going to be 3.93 volts. If we wait until we reach four seconds, which is our characteristic time constant, then the potential across those plates would be 63.2% of our maximum value, like we just talked about previously. Now let's treat a discharging capacitor. We're going to consider a capacitor being discharged through a resistor. So our capacitor initially has, a, has been fully charged and it has a potential across its plates of 12 volts. And this capacitor has a capacitance of 3.5 times 10 to the minus six farads. 
we are going to, this capacitor is fully charged, we're going to close the switch. And when we do that, we're going to discharge our capacitor through this resistor. Okay? This resistor has a resistance of 2 ohms. So that is our circuit. We've got our capacitor that's being discharged through this resistor whenever we close this switch here. We're going to find how long does it take for the charge on this capacitor to drop to one fourth of its initial value. So T is equal to question mark when we reach one fourth of its initial value. Okay. So we've got our equation for the discharging of a capacitor in a resistor capacitor circuit. That equation says that the potential across our capacitor at some later time is equal to the potential that we start with times E to the minus T over tau. All right, so let's see. We want to find the time, we've got to solve this equation for this T up here when we reach one-fourth of our maximum potential. So this is the maximum potential that we originally had on our plates of 12 volts. We want to figure out what time do we get one-fourth of 12 volts, essentially. So I'm going to put here one-fourth V naught. Okay, that's what this potential is. That's what we're looking for, the time at which this happens, equals V naught E to the minus T over tau. We've got this V naught on both sides, so that can cancel. We could divide both sides by V naught. So one fourth is equal to E to the minus T over tau. We've got this T here up in our exponent on E. So what can we do to get this uh, T by itself? We can take the natural log of both sides. You would have learned um, this relationship in a previous math class, that the natural log of e to some power n gives you back that power n. So if you take the natural log of e raised to some power, you get back the number that was that power. So if we take the natural log of both sides, we'll have the natural log of 1 fourth equals the natural log of e to the minus t over tau. So this natural log of e to the stuff gives us back the stuff. So this is equal to minus t over tau. So the natural log of 1 fourth is equal to minus t over tau. Now, um, let's see. We can solve this equation for t, little t. We multiply both sides by tau. So minus t is equal to tau times the natural log of 1 fourth. Now, we multiply both sides by minus 1, we get rid of the minus 1 on the left, and that gives us a negative sign on the right. Okay? So the time at which we reach 1 fourth of the initial um, potential across those plates will equal to minus tau. Okay, so tau, our characteristic time constant, is always the resistance times the capacitance or the equivalent capacitance of the capacitors in our circuit. Um, maybe we had a couple of resistors in series or parallel. This R is the total resistance in our circuit, or the equivalent resistance in our circuit, and this capacitance is the equivalent capacitance in our circuit. So tau is going to be our resistance, 2 ohms, times the capacitance, which is the 3.5 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. So this is going to be RC, natural log of 1 fourth. So this will equal minus our 2 ohms times our capacitance of 3.5 times 10 to the minus 6 farad times the natural log of 1 fourth. Okay, so when you take the natural log of um, a number that's smaller than 1, that natural log is negative. So this quantity is negative, so we'll have a negative times a negative, and that will give us a positive value for our time. So when we take um, 2 times 3.5, here I'll just write this out here, this becomes negative 7 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds 
that's what tau is here, times the natural log of one-fourth is negative 1.39. So we've got our negative times our negative, and that gives us a time of 9.73 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds. So we reach one-fourth of our initial potential across our capacitor at a time of 9.73 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds. So that is how you can find the answer to this problem. We have to um, use the relationship that the natural log of E raised to some power gives us back um, that number. That was the power. Right? So then for part B on our problem, we're going to compute the initial charge of our capacitor and the time constant. So actually, that's really easy. We kind of already computed the time constant here, actually. Here we did. So tau was equal to R times C. So actually, we needed to do this step um, before we were able to complete part A anyway. So the time constant for this circuit is the resistance times our capacitance. That was our 2 ohms times our capacitance of 3.5 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. And that was 7 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds. Um, and the initial charge, well, remember that the charge on our capacitor is equal to its capacitance times the potential across it. So our capacitance was 3.5 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. The potential we had initially across our plates was 12 volts. So the initial charge on my capacitor would be 4.5 times 10 to the minus 5 coulombs. Because remember, a coulomb is a unit of charge. Now, this is an extra part of the problem. But what if, instead of discharging this capacitor, we were charging this capacitor? And I asked you to find the time when we reach 1 fourth of the maximum potential while charging. So the equation for charging our capacitor in a resistor capacitor circuit is the potential is equal to the maximum potential that we could achieve times 1 minus e to the minus t over tau. So in this case, if I asked you to find the time when we reach 1 fourth of the uh, maximum potential while charging, you'd be also solving this equation for t on this side, we would be looking for the potential when um, we reach one fourth of the maximum. And that equals V max times one minus E to the minus T over tau. And then those potentials cancel. One fourth is equal to one minus E to the minus T over tau. And then you could, in a similar way that we were doing it over here, um, you could solve this equation for t. So you'd have to get e to the minus t over tau by itself on one side, move all the other numbers to the other side. You could take the natural log of both sides, like we did here, and then proceed to get the time when we would reach one fourth of our maximum potential while we're charging the capacitor. And if you were to complete this problem, and finish solving it for t, we would find the time when that happens is 2 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds.